Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lawyer's Daughter. I'm the Lawyer's Daughter, Kelsey Freese, and we're sitting here with my dad, Steve Freese. What's up, Dad? I'm getting ready for the Super Bowl. What's How up, about Blake? you? I'm very excited because I guess when this comes out, I will be well on my way or already in Vegas to go to the Super Bowl this year. Oh, you lucky duck. I know. I'm so excited. It won't be the first one you've been to. It will not be the first one I've been to. You and I went to the Super Bowl, what was that, 2007? A long time ago, it was when the Patriots played um, the um, Eli. Giants. Yeah. And Eli was playing for the Giants, and uh, uh, the receiver for the Giants makes the catch back over his head in the last minute, and they win the game in the last minute. You know, when we went, obviously, I was, I was pretty young when we went, and so I couldn't fully appreciate the setup that we had when we went. But we had really good seats. We we were fortunate. We had good seats. Uh, Who got us? Did uh, you just buy tickets or did someone? No, I, I think uh, maybe Fred Smith with FedEx had gotten us yeah. tickets. I can't remember exactly. Uh, I know that uh, we flew back on this plane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'd forgotten about I'd that. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that and we went early, and we went to a like pre Super Bowl party, and it was in this, it was in Arizona, Scottsdale, right, right. And we went to some, I'm and of course I can't, I might be remembering incorrectly, but it was like either a mansion or something, and they had a huge stage and ice sculptures, and I remember Earth, Wind, and Fire was playing. Yeah, and um, we went to some of the events that FedEx had. Uh, for their patrons, and uh, I went to, I remember Phil Sims and uh, uh, the quarterback that used to be for the Buffalo Bills, uh, can't remember his name right now, uh, gave a little talk, Mm -hmm. which was very interesting, very interesting for me. Right, I'm like, I don't remember, but I'm sure it was great. (laughs) Right, it was it was great, and and I think one of the the exciting things for me at the Super Bowl, besides the fact the Giants won, um, was that uh, Tom Petty played at halftime. Oh yeah, yeah, and that was exciting for me. Yeah, yeah, that was, and it and it just is so vivid in my memory. But again, I didn't really like comprehend what I was getting to experience at the time, but. That was a really fun one, and of course, Eli and them winning made it. It it did. I remember uh, in the hallway, uh, I was coming out of the restroom, and uh, Spike Lee was there. I mean, you know, because you see yeah. so many celebrities, but I was kind of awestruck at that time by the number of celebrities. As you say that, I remember seeing the uh, singer Jordan Sparks. She right. was at that party, and I have, or maybe she wasn't at the party. She was. She was at like doing a pre-interview at the Super Bowl like, as we were walking through and I yeah. have some like very zoomed in, zoomed in grainy <laughs> photos that I <laughs> took of her on my like really not good digital camera but I was like zooming in as far as you could possibly send. It's really funny because uh, a guy that we work with now Connor he's like best friends with Jordan Sparks and I, I need to remember to tell him that story because I was I was obsessed with her especially at that time she had some jams out. Yeah, it was it was fun, and uh, uh, you know we weren't there for a long time, and jump on a big plane and come home, and it was really uh, fun. What a great that was a great father daughter experience for it was. us. It, Thanks for taking me. How did I? Get, how did you choose to take me and not one of my brothers? I don't think anyone else in my family would go with me except you. Really? No, no, I don't. Know. <laughs> they had things. They had things. Going. Oh, so I wasn't first choice. Yeah, they had things. Don't get it twisted. I was not first yeah, choice. They they had things going on. <laughs> okay, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. Well, we had fun. I loved it. Yeah, I'm really excited about going this year. Um, of course, as we are recording this right now, we're not exactly sure who is going. Well, we're not sure. I've got a pretty good idea, but. Oh, you've got some predictions? Let's see. No, I'm. I'm, We might as well put them out there. Time will tell. I I, I think, um, well, if, if I had my two picks, um, well, I would like to see Detroit in there, but I don't think they're going to make it. Uh Uh-huh. I think it's going to be uh, probably Kansas City and San Francisco. That's mm. who I think. Have you heard this um, 
conspiracy that you know how they they've already released the logo for the Super Bowl and they re they release it early every year but for the last 3 years the colors inside of the logo match the two teams that end up going to play in the Super Bowl and so people are saying there's some something fishy going on about that without conspiracies we would have a lot of bored people <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. I forget which ones they say. I think they said the colors of the Lions and the 49ers. I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen that. But anyway, it will be fun. And of course, you know, it's Las Vegas, baby. It's Vegas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what can who happen knows? in Vegas? Who knows? We may not know who even <laughs> wins if they play in Las Vegas because... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we know what happens to things <laughs> in Vegas. It's going to be fun, and it's always kind of a bittersweet for me because it is the tolling of the bell for football being over. Mm. And then we have to wait till Ole Miss's spring game, and then it starts churning back up, and then college baseball. and Yeah. Back in, back I know in it, the it is. It's sort of like putting a little cap on it. But something I'm excited about seeing is, of course, I'm going so, so that I can. I'm going to be making some videos with some for some brands. But I'm going. I haven't done this yet at the NFL games. I've only done it at the um, college games that I've gone to this year, where I do that "Who's a Gentleman" video, where I put my hand out to them and see who kisses it. And I think I've said before, but the fandom of NFL fans is completely different sure. to college football. So I cannot wait to see what what teams are there and how they act and how they react to me. Yeah. You, you, you may come back with less digits. I know. They may <laughs> bite them straight off. They're right. so excited to be there. Which brings us to a sad event. Oh, man. There's been some weird stuff going on. There has been. In college or I mean, in NFL sports. Right. These fans out of Kansas City that have turned up frozen to death in the backyard of their friend. Right. Crazy. i tell you what's the weirdest thing about that to me, besides the tragedy of it, is that I started watching True Detective, and uh, it's got Jodie Foster in it, and I'm a True Detective fan, along with Fargo, those two of my faves. But... In this True Detective, and I don't want to give a spoiler because it's it's early on in the season, so I don't think it'll hurt. You'll just have to live with it. <laughs> but uh, they find a group of people out in the um, uh, north of Alaska, frozen, all of them frozen together. Mm. And I watched that, and then it was like the next day or so. I found out about the, these chief fans yeah. that were found. So it was really, Weird. it was like, do, 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 do. It's you know? so eerie. Yeah. There's so many things about it that are weird. So basically, I guess they had gone over to their friend's house to watch a game. Uh, so it was, I think, five in total. One of them lived in the home. And so four of them had, I guess, gone outside and were just chilling out on the patio in these absolutely sub-degree temperatures they were having that you know historical like major cold front and they just never came back inside and the guy who lived there didn't know they were back there for two days well i, I don't know what went on in those two days but i find it credible that he may not have known I find it very credible. Let's say they're having a party, they're drinking, they're doing whatnot. And he goes to bed. And his buds that come over there, obviously all of them close friends, uh, all similar ages, um, they want to stay up and party. And he says, okay, guys, I'm going to bed. See you later. We know or are told that one of the guys of the four goes home that are left and that leaves these three guys there. And who knows? You know, I've tried to theorize what could have happened. Um, maybe they all said, let's go out and jump in the snow or mm -hmm. uh, let's celebrate. Or one of them goes out and the other one jumps on him and wrestles. And the other one, who knows? Yeah. Who knows what happened? 
And the theory seems to be from the investigative phase is that they're trying to see if, if perhaps they had ingested drugs. Uh, mm-hmm. but, and, of course, what drug comes up nowadays, fentanyl. Yeah. And um, got out there and maybe thought they could do something and uh, became overcome with the effects of their drugs and coal. But who yeah. knows? Yeah, they're still waiting. I just checked to see if anything had come out yet at the time of filming. There has not been yeah. anything that's come out, but they're still waiting on the tox, toxicology tox, toxicology yeah. report. Right. So they're running a toxicology on them, and uh, uh, there, there are various ways of, of taking uh, fluids from humans, but uh, blood and what's called vitreous fluid from your eyes uh, to give an indication of were drugs ingested and what were the in quotation marks quantity quantity of drugs in right. other words if you took a certain drug uh, what are the metabolites in your body saying which are simply when the elements of the drug are processed by the body mm. so i just find it odd that all three of them would go down at, you know i don't know it just seems like you can just see like you were saying the scene they're like one two three if they were taking something it just that the effects would come i don't know if you imagine like were they banging on the door for help and and something that was odd and i i will say that i think i don't think that they think any foul play they're not they're not investigating anybody right now for this it, apparently, as, apparently as far as we know as far as we know well that's what they're reporting they're saying no that this there was no suspicious activity and the guy who lives in the house his lawyer his statement was saying that he was inside sleeping with an eye mask on and by a fan for two days that does seem odd to me personally but i mean if they were having a bender I don't know, but I just find like that seems odd. And I'm not saying him not going in his backyard is is odd. I mean, when it's cold, you're not always walking around right. all the doors of your house, but still seems odd. Well, it, 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 it is odd, but let's look at it through a different lens. Let's say that five people were out in a boat, okay? Um, the owner of the boat says, I'm going back to the cabin. Uh, another guy says, uh, I'm going home. So you got three people in the boat. And one of them decides he's going to dive in the water uh, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. See how deep it is, uh, dropped his cell phone, whatever. And he gets in trouble. Well, one of his friends is going to go in to help him. He goes in the water to help. He gets in trouble. Mm-hmm. Now, they've all been drinking, let's say, for this exercise. And uh, they're in the, under the influence of alcohol. Well, the third guy, he decides to help or reaches a pole out, and they pull a pole, and he falls, and they all three drown. Mm-hmm. Well, let's say now you're investigating. Three people drown. Oh. Uh, what does your investigation show? Well, it shows they all drowned. It shows all three were under the influence. Let's say they were 0.15 of alcohol. There was beer in the boat. We've talked to the owner. He said, yes, they'd been drinking and having fun, but he went back, had a bender, fell asleep. The other guy goes home. Well, the police are going to investigate that just like they're investigating this. Mm-hmm. And it seems bizarre, right? But it could happen. Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to talk to the guy that owns the house. They're going to talk to the guy that left. They're going to talk about what drugs were being used. They're going to see if there were any indication of drugs in the house. Mm -hmm. And, of course, do the toxicology on the bodies. And what else can you do? Right. Remember how we've talked in another episode about how if you are the one that supplies like fentanyl, for example, and right. and there's a, someone dies, mm-hmm. you get in trouble for that. Would something like this 
Uh, well, could it raise its ugly head? Yes, it could raise its ugly head because the next question is who brought the drugs? Right. And I think it's uh, I think it's a stretch to prosecute people like that unless they're giving someone, uh, unless a perpetrator is giving someone drugs that they don't know it. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, you're spiking a drink or whatever. Right. Then, yes, I can see it applying. Uh, but if if you have five good buddies and they're all yeah, smoking dope or uh, uh, taking pills or whatever, I, I don't see it uh, because yeah. they made that choice. Can you imagine? So I think how what happened and how they found them was one of their wives you know, I guess had obviously been calling him. And then when he didn't come home after two days, she called the police for a welfare check, safety check, safety check. And I want to hear what that entails. But so she called for the safety check and the police come imagine the police banging on your door. And you've, I guess, been asleep by this fan for two days. And you're like, Oh, what's going on? And then they're like, we need to, your friends are missing. And then they find them just frozen to death like popsicles in your backyard. Yeah. I cannot imagine. That has just got to be the shock of a lifetime. Yeah, I'd want to go back to bed. Yeah, I would. I I mean, you would be in, I'd be in a mental hospital literally the rest of my life. So what is it when uh, you call for a safety check? What, what are the circumstances that they, that qualify for them to actually go out and do that? It's, it's kind of a knock and announce is what you would call it. A police officer would go there and knock on the door, somebody would answer, and uh, he'd say, what do you need? And he said, look, we got a call in from so-and-so. In this case, it'd probably be much different than if it was a stranger. Mm. Uh, so-and-so's wife, he didn't uh, come home. She hadn't seen him in two days. Uh, do you care if we look around? No, no, come on, look around, because it's his friend. Right. It's his friend. So in order to, let's say they knocked on the door and the guy said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And they said, well, do you mind if we come in? He said, yeah, I do. And uh, he said, well, we can go get a warrant. And he said, well, go get your warrant. Mm. And uh, what are they going to get a warrant on? Yeah. Uh, Unless the cell phone pings. Right in the general area, but it's a close call on whether you're going to get a warrant or not. Would they have pinged the cell phone before they showed up there, or were Uh, they just following her saying the last known location was this? Don't know. Mm. Don't know. Uh, I would think that probably on a welfare check, if um, they had not pinged the phone, it would not surprise me. Mm-hmm. It's just a call, and you send a patrolman out with them. And uh, I would think that she would know, the wife would know the person. So uh, I, I think it would be more of a familial type situation yeah. than it would be if you're looking for, um, you know, somebody out of the silence of the lambs. Right. Where, where they <laughs> tell you to go kick rocks. Yeah. You're not coming in. She probably had his location, too. She may have been seen like, oh, he still had his friends. Maybe that's why she wasn't wor- uh, initially worried. They're going to look at everyone's t- uh, cell phones. Um, they're going to get uh, authority to go in and look at those cell phones, see what texts were sent, what phone calls were made, last known phone calls right. to try to pinpoint the a time when something went amiss do you think that they'll release any of that information if there is no foul play just because there's public interest in it since it's been Uh, such a big story or do you think they'll say we're no i I think they'll release it i I think they'll they may not release everything Mm -hmm. Uh, they may do it in a general sort of way by saying look uh we've checked all the records available to us which you you fill in the blank Mm -hmm. cell phones and uh, we found that uh, um, from the toxicology, here's what's likely to have occurred. So, and when they do the autopsy, they'll have two things that they mark in the autopsy. It will be cause of death, okay? And then the second thing is manner of death. And here's mm. the difference. Cause of death would be like a combination of uh, 
uh, um, drugs, and uh, chill factor. Okay, uh, they died as you know. That's the cause of death. And the manner of death, then that's where it comes to if someone's been shot, it's a homicide. A homicide does not mean murder. A homicide is, is a term of art. Okay? Mm. But in this case, it should be, uh, from what we know today, accidental. Mm-hmm. Okay? So uh, take, for instance, drugs. You've got suicide, and you've got accidental overdose. Oh. So that's the manner. Gotcha. Manner so that's marked. Death. That's yeah. marked oh, down. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. That's, that's in the form. Wow. That's really interesting, actually, because, yeah, I had never thought about that there would, there would be a distinction, actually, between those two things. That You kind of just assume, like, maybe they would always put down, like, accidental overdose. Right, right. right and, but... But but you don't, uh, and, and, and that goes back to the quantitative analysis of what was in the blood. So you might have an accidental overdose of, let's say, Oxycontin. Uh, they have a quantitative level that is like a normal dosage. Uh, maybe somebody doubled up on their dosage uh, just to get high. Mm-hmm. And then if they've taken the whole five or six yeah. pills, then you get into the suicide. Right. I was just thinking about the circumstances of this and the fact that they were celebrating that their team had won. How different would the news coverage be and maybe the agenda of the news coverage be if their team had lost? Maybe it would be suicide pact. I'm just, that as you were saying that, uh, I was thinking... How how without the talks without all the information out there how you could completely spin a story to look a certain way you, to you, get clicks like we've talked about many many times you could spin that story but here would be the difficulty the ages of the individual the fact they were all male right uh, I I think that counters the the suicide pack sort of thing. Uh, unless you found out later all of them had bet their homes. Well, yeah, that's kind of what yeah, I was thinking. On, on, the, on, the, on the game and um, says their life is over. But uh, I think that'd be a stretch. It would it would be a stretch, but it's not something that I would put past them putting out there. Oh, no. Just as, no, no. as things, I mean, people, you know, make, make up their own stories until the truth comes out. Right. Now, Dad, what's going to happen? Is this story going to, do you think, really gain more traction if the toxicology reports come back and they're clean yes i think so that, i i think that would throw a a burr under the saddle of the investigation yeah that then they're going to say maybe we better take another look at it but mm-hmm. but of course you know they're going to look again going back to the autopsy they look for any injuries at all mm-hmm. on the body they examine the hands separately. They examine the fingers uh, separately. The fingernails, uh, the, what we call the lower extremities, and your and your legs and your feet, front and back. Uh, so they're looking for any signs of trauma. Mm-hmm. It's just very sad. Right. I hope that yeah. I hope that they get the answers soon to that. Just because. I know that that must be the most bizarre thing for all these people to be going through, oh, friend, oh. their family, just. Oh, it's it's a, it's a tragedy, and, and it affects so many people, and uh, it's really sad. And but, it's just one of the. I, I feel like recently there's just been this string of such bizarre deaths coming out on the news. Like every time I refresh my phone, it'll be like a TMZ, TMZ article will come up, and I'm like, are they just making things up? Are they just taking things from? you know, NCIS episodes, like there was one that came out, I guess, yesterday, like, and and this is a TMZ news, not local news, but it was about a guy from Memphis who was a DJ, who his brother just found decapitated. Did you see that? Right. And, and, you know, they use the the term decapitated. Then you see another article, uh, you know, just for the purpose of clicks, beheaded. Um, The... Which is worse. <laughs> Wait, well, 
I don't know what I know what the the term decapitated means, and and we go back to you know a guillotine, right? Okay, yeah. that, that a strong clean, imagery, right? A clean cut and and the head severed from the body. Uh, but but you've I've noticed throughout the decades that uh, reporters use the term decapitated or their head was severed, and uh, if they use the term their head was severed from the body, mm. then that gives me a, more of an indication um, that it was separ- separated from the body. Uh, I, I've seen cases where people weren't decapitated, but they reported they were, and, and for all practical purposes, the the uh, result is the same, but, right. but, but not completely detached from the body. Right. It sounds like... Uh, since his brother found him, yeah, it sounds like he was completely decapitated. He was. The report is gruesome. <laughs> Did you read it? No. Oh my no, gosh. No, I, I just read the brother up on finding the body and stopped. Yeah, there. he walked in and he thought that he had like a jacket pulled up over his head yeah. because it was cold, and he ran. It scared him because he it, something was obviously wrong, and he ran out. And then he was like, "Wait, maybe it was just." a jacket over his head and came back in and obviously it was not um not that and they said he was in Berkeley. where is that midtown in midtown so that's isn't that a, is that a nice area am i getting that mixed up with something i, I'm I not, don't want to hurt anybody i'm not feelings. well versed in this. I, I would say that uh in the last few years it has become dangerous oh really mm-hmm. okay yeah i just a lot kn- of carjackings oh. a lot of stolen vehicles robberies things of that what's nature. it near just uh, for my uh, Overton Square type mm-hmm. near. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, the, do you know you know this guy's history? No, I, what I did know, obviously, I learned from the article he'd been shot before. Right. He had gotten shot maybe in fourteen uh, at a club or something, or coming out of a club, and you know crimes like this. And in, in the first thing the the police look at and theorize based on their experience in working crimes like this is that uh, this is personal, mm. okay? This is somebody that had a grudge. This is somebody who really, really, really didn't want like this guy. Right. Didn't like it. So... Um, uh, it's it's going to be, I think, certainly investigated as, as we know it's going to be investigated as a homicide because yeah. yeah. we've learned that earlier. But uh, I think it will end up being a murder. And uh, I think it's very difficult to uh, uh, commit suicide by decapitation. Exactly. Yeah. And what's even scarier about it to me is at this time of reading and recording, they don't have any leads on it right now. Well, they don't have any leads, but um, they we, will, I guess. They after will. They will. They start investigating, and and you know they're going to investigate. Uh, they're not going to release to the public what they found, like uh, uh, finding a butcher knife or uh, an axe, or they're not going to report that right now. Really? Why? No. Uh, because they don't want. Uh, there are a number of reasons. Number number one, you have people out there wanting to inject themselves into an investigation, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, false information gets out into the public. Or when you have a suspect and you're questioning that suspect, if that suspect uh, decides to talk, um, certain questions are going to revolve around those objects, mm. uh, like. Um, have you ever been to Ace Hardware? Because we've tracked the axe down to having been purchased at Ace mm. Hardware. You, you see what I'm saying? So their form of questioning, they have to have aces in the hole. Mm. That they know stuff that the suspect doesn't know they know. Right. right. And they can almost, yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing to think about is when you have the information, how you can, the things that you can do with it, you can play dumb with it. They could, you know, they could be misleading him into a complete to say, you know, to lying. There could be all kinds of different ways to get. Yeah. So that that's interesting because I was thinking there's to me, it's obvious to me 
why you wouldn't report certain things in the news and they wouldn't make things public. But I guess I was thinking, what would be the harm of saying like, yeah, we found the thing. And that's, that's a great answer as to why. Normally when you start hearing all the information or what you believe to be all the information, the police are in trouble solving the crime. And at that point they're saying, we're going to release this to the public. We need their help now Mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen it much else about it other than just like those very small little details. So maybe that means they're on a run and, you know, are, well, are getting well, getting somewhere with it. They are. They're going to be talking to his friends and acquaintances, talking about has he had an argument with anyone lately? Has he? Uh, and, and I'm not uh, suggesting this. I'm just saying these are normal things. Right. That uh, had he been going out with someone's wife, mm-hmm. thing, things of that nature, uh, did he owe somebody money? Did he owe a drug dealer money? Uh, all, all of these things they look into on everybody, mm-hmm. on everybody. So I, I don't want to specify it's just in his case. Right. I just wonder, I, it, like I said, it's unsettling to me they don't have a lead, but more so that the family wasn't, and maybe they were, but the energy behind it is they're like, who would do this? I, that would scare me so much if, you know, you had no clue what was going on and a close family members of who would want to hurt your family. Well, you in know, that way, in that, like you were saying, personal way, like obviously like a shooting and things, these things happen, but but the beheading is just, or severing or whatever well, they're saying is if, if, just if, diabolical. Everyone has their secrets. So just because you have brother, sister, mother, father, they don't know everything about your life. Mm. Um, some families closer than other families. Uh, some individuals and in families are loners, and mm-hmm. they like it that way. Mm-hmm. They don't like people asking them a bunch of questions about their personal life. Right. So uh, I guarantee you the detectives are on it. I guarantee you they're very good at what they do. And they're going to start backtracking. And like we've already mentioned before on on the Kansas City fans, uh, they're going to be looking at cell phones, uh, any electronic devices, cameras in the neighborhood, cameras in businesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, What they want to establish first Mm -hmm. is time of death. So they will try to determine a time of death. And they do that by various means. So... um, uh, they'll try to uh, establish this time frame. Then they're going to go back and start looking at cameras in the area. Yeah. And um, uh, and initially may not tell them anything. A bunch of cars driving up and down the street and a bunch of people walking up. But if they get a suspect, then they can start looking for that particular vehicle. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I wonder if he had cameras because this person came to his house. Well, we don't know that. They could have moved the body. Yeah. Uh, there are going to be cameras on businesses nearby mm. or other homes or right. ring doorbells, things of that nature. They're going to be cameras. Right. This wasn't like somewhere. And that's why I wanted to ask where exactly that was. Just I, It sounded familiar to me, but visually I couldn't think of where it was. And so it's not somewhere that's out in the boondocks, you know, or... No, no, and, and it's going to be, uh, you know, it, it may be that on his particular street uh, or where his house was, apartment was, whatever, um, there may not be ring doorbell cameras, oh, but God. on the extended streets, there will be. Yeah. It sounds to me, though, if this person came and did this type of crime, it seems like they would have had some forethought on this. Or, or, uh, <laughs> or, not. or it's a crime of opportunity, a crime of passion. Uh, you know, immediately people are thinking some guy did this. Well, maybe a woman. Right. And I know we were talking earlier about the cause and manner of death. It's not, it's, it's, is it unlikely that he died due to being decapitated? Does it seem more likely that he was like stabbed and then the body was? Well, or unconscious. Oh. May not necessarily have been dead, may have been not uh, unconscious. Oh, God. And, um, uh, yeah, I, 
you know, we read so many stories and see so many videos of people walking down the streets with swords and machetes Mm -hmm. and things like that. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, this is one I'm going to be kind of in that, you know, when there's a rubbernecking to, I don't necessarily am dying to know what happened, but at the same time, I'm, it's hard not to look to know what's happening, especially since it's so close, right. close to home. Uh, it's going to end up being a, a revenge slash emotional killing. Yeah. Well, keep me updated in case TMZ isn't covering it. Well, uh, I will make sure. <laughs> Add that to our daily, like, very mm. weird things that we text each other. Right. <laughs> I'm going to keep all the things that I text you this week strictly to sports and Super Bowl, which is our other favorite genre. If it's yeah. not murder, it's sports. Right. Thus, pretty much the themes of which, this podcast. Which, of course, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you noticed, but the guy uh, accused of killing a former Saints player was convicted, I believe, yesterday no. in a trial. Yes, and, and I apologize. I can't remember the Saints player's name, but it was high profile when it occurred. Really? Yeah. So they, what happened? He went to trial, was found guilty. And he will be He will be chilling in the Yeah, he'll be in the pokey. For a bit. Yeah. God. Well, hopefully everything stays, <laughs> stays clean in Vegas. Yeah. I have a team that I want to win. I'm not going to jinx them, but it may have or not have something to do with my favorite musician, Miss Taylor Swift. I understand. So that's my team. That's my pick. And uh, but yeah, I'll keep you. I'll keep you posted from Vegas, Dad. Well, I maybe I'll win it. some money and I'll bring it back for the podcast. <laughs> I, I'm for the 49ers for a couple of reasons. Number one, their quarterback who nobody knew much about and uh, yeah. kind of uh, has burst onto the scene. And also their running back, McCafferty, he's always been a favorite of mine since he played at Stanford. Yeah. So, Well, we'll know soon. We'll know. We will know. All right, guys, that's another episode from us. We'll see you back here next time. Bye. Adios.